Hello and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. They accepted me in the Angels Messenger and they accepted me in the Destinies to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Kelly Roberts Carrigan. But before that, I'd like to say thank you for watching the show live at a later date as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I help women to cross roads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny and their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Kelly Roberts Carrigan, who will be sharing how by embracing your sensitivity, it can help the world have more heart. Now, Kelly is also known as Coach Kelly and she is inspiring sensitive souls to establish healthy boundaries and confidently communicate from a place of love. As a professional speaker and coach, she is helping her clients to calm the chaos, find their voice, communicate from a place of love and authenticity, feel connected and valued and gain confidence. In other words, she helps them step into their personal power to create a life they love. Now, Coach Kelly is attentive and magnetic ensuring her clients feel valued and heard. She is highly sought after by sensitive souls around the world who are looking to confidently communicate with strong personalities, set boundaries authentically and make themselves a priority. And of course, she also spends her days being the present mum, friend, daughter and business owner and nurturing herself too, with testimonials such as by Kelly showing me how to invest in myself and my well-being has been the most freeing, liberating and kindest thing I could do for myself. And I can't believe I was giving away so much power. She has taught me that my thoughts, feelings and point of view are as valid as anyone else's and I have the right to speak them. So without further delay, hello Kelly and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Oh, I'm like honored by that wonderful introduction. That was really beautiful and really moving. Thank you so much, right? Talk about embrace your sensitivity. <laughs> exactly, you know, and people, people are saying good things about you. So, so you know, so, 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 let's get, so let's get them out there. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I am doing wonderful today. It's such a pleasure to be here. Such a pleasure to share the message, really to help inspire Thank you so much, right? Talk about embracing sensitive souls. <laughs> yeah, we have some yeah, feedback. Yeah, you know. yeah, we do. There you go. <laughs> we, we do. It, it's, it's all the technology. So before we get to this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments, and thoughts. As both Kelly and I want you to be part of this show, so please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello um, and answer any questions or comments live or once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all recordings. So Kelly, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how by embracing your sensitivity, you can help the world have more heart. Oh, well, that's amazing. Uh, yes, I will share a little bit about myself. So you shared quite a bit already. Yes, my name is Kelly Kerrigan. Uh, my business is Empower Me Coaching. And like I said, I'm, you know, I'm inspiring sensitive souls to embrace their sensitivity. Because myself, I mean, I grew up as a sensitive. I mean, I'm still sensitive, you know, as I wipe away that one tear from my eye right now. <laughs> but I've always been told, I've been conditioned by society to feel that my sensitivity is a weakness. Um, I'm that type of person that I tend to feel first. And, you know, for many, many years of my life, I was unable to process what I was feeling. It was so hard to get it out. It was so hard to vocalize what I was feeling. But, you know, I lived with this perceived 
sen like this sensitivity as a perceived weakness. So therefore, I would show up in ways where, you know, I was inauthentic because I felt like I was always trying to hide who I really am. Like I was embarrassed of my sensitivity. You know, I would like watch shows or movies or have conversations where I felt like I couldn't be fully present because if I was fully present, then I would become emotional and I, I was embarrassed about that, right? Yeah. And um, so I was, you know, I was living inauthentically. But that switch for me about, I gotta think how many years ago, like I was 35 years old. So about seven years ago, I'm giving away my age here, but that's okay. <laughs> It's just yeah. a number. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just what you feel inside, not what's on the outside. Yeah, that's right. Um, so my perceived, it all changed for me when my perceived weakness actually became my greatest strength. And how that unfolded for me is I became aware of certain events. For instance, I'd go get my nails done and the lady doing my nails would share some pretty vulnerable information. And then say things like, oh, I'm not sure why I told you all that. Like, I have never told anybody something like that. Or I found myself where I would go for an interview, like a job interview. And the interview unknowingly turned into somewhat of a coaching session. <laughs> the person interviewing me was like, what? Like, whoa, like what's happening here? Or if I was at gatherings, it seemed like people would seek me out and I would, you know, find myself in a lot of like one-on-one -on -one conversations. And I started to realize, what if my perceived weakness is actually my greatest gift? Mm -hmm. What if my sensitivity, my vulnerability, my empathy is what this world needs and what people are drawn to? So I have a sister, like an older sister, and I would think about 15 years ago, we were at like a, here in Canada, it's called Niagara Falls. Yeah. So it's like a, you know, it's it's a big, big tourist area, especially in the summer. There's lots and lots of people. And we spent the day there. And I remember at one point we were sitting down and we looked at each other and we were like, did you notice that so many people approached us today to ask us like directions or say hello or engage in small talk? Why? Why us? I mean, now I know why, but back then it was just yeah. an observation. It's because, you know, you're like, for anybody out there who can relate as like a sensitive soul, an empath, a heart centered, you know, leader, is that you just emit this different energy, this warmness. And that's what I mean by the world needs more heart. So the world needs sensitive souls, empaths to embrace their sensitivity, to realize that it is their superpower. Because once you realize that, you can start playing a bigger game and you can start being more confident and taking on leadership roles. Like heart-centered leadership is becoming more and more known. Um, emotional intelligence is becoming more and more known. And people who lead from the heart are going to be the new world leaders. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 I, and I think you can see that with a lot of the younger people coming through as well. And also with some, actually some business people now are actually, you know, a lot more heart centered um, than, than previously. So what we need to get is more government officials who are more heart centered in, in, into government. But, but yeah, the children of today, the young people of today, I think are kind of like getting the right balance out there. Uh-huh. An observation that I made just a few days ago, I was in the presence of some uh, young moms. And for me, it's interesting because my youngest is now 11 years old going on 12 and my oldest is, you know, going on 22. So it's really interesting to see the parenting change over the years. So what I observed a few days ago is just the language that they, the younger moms use with their kids, like, oh, take off your shoes and go running, go run around in the ground, you know, and get grounded. 
um, they're teach they're just naturally teaching their kids assertiveness skills. And I'm going, oh, I wish I learned that when I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had someone to teach me. Life, I feel, would have been easier. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's exactly. So yeah, so so it's really good, um, you know, that that people are now, you know, sort of like taking that and leading the younger people on onto it. But I, but I know that um, you know a lot of sensitive um, people that that I've that I've come across, you know, they're they're so worried about all the energies they they pick up all the time, and it's really really draining for them. Um, so, so what sort of advice would you give to to, to people that, that just find it really draining? They just really want to hide away. Oh, that's a great question. Love that question. Well, first of all, there are a lot of you know different energies in the world, and you cannot run away from all of them because if you run away from one energy to another spot to to like spot B, there's going to be someone else with that same energy. So the tip that I have for people is, cause it's so easy to focus on like the negative aspects. So if you can walk into the presence of that person and mentally think about their best quality and only think about that and treat them as if that's all you see is their best quality and their most amazing quality. Okay, that's yeah, that that's that's a pretty that's a pretty good idea because a lot of um, people sort of like oh you know you need to shield yourself in cloaks and and everything. Can I kind of like um, don't kind of like don't really go with with the with the cloaking because you clo because you stop everything else, all the good stuff coming through as well as the, all all the negative stuff. So I really like the idea of just you know let let in the positive parts of the energy um connecting with that and ignoring all the negative parts mm -hmm. yes and you know <clears throat> i mean if we're just thinking you know energetically for sure but i mean there's also there's lots of other tips as well is that you've probably heard some of them is just you know as a sensitive soul we tend to be um i would just want to say dumping grounds for people other people's problems so it's it's learning assertiveness skills too and how to communicate to, you know, effectively shut down that conversation without being rude, right? So learning yeah. assertiveness skills is how to communicate with that person to respect yourself, right? To respect your energy <clears throat> and to respect them as a person because one thing that I always am mindful of is to make sure that everybody feels valued and heard. So, you know, whether you're a sensitive soul or, or not a sensitive soul, really, we still want, want to be, we want to feel valued and heard. So if I show, if, you know, me being a sensitive, if I show up to, if I'm, say, in the presence of a person who is like venting and dumping their problems, and I just say, listen, I don't even want to hear about it, and I walk away, that is not an effective communication style to create connection and um, you know to uphold my integrity and my authenticity because I really am about connection. So if I behave in that manner, I'm breaking that connection. I'm I'm actually adding to the problem of our world where we feel disconnected, right? So it's being able to communicate in a way that values your energy and values that other person as a human being. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that that makes that makes absolute uh, per perfect sense because I think we are in this day and age we we do tend to turn away from people when when they don't resonate with us or you know they upset us or something rather than going actually. Let's just see where we could where we can take this and what we can get out of it, what we can gain from it, if there's any healing or wisdom that, that we can get out of it. There's always something to learn. There's a lesson, as you know, in every situation that we come across. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're watching this, please do say hello. Um, so we so so we so we can actually know you're there because on on the screen we can't actually um 
see who's here and I know we've, we've um, got a couple of people watching so so please do um, say hello so where did the um, coaching and coach Kelly come from <laughs> that's amazing too uh, so it came from the place of <clears throat> I needed to learn how to communicate with strong personalities difficult people like that very dominant type of personality uh, because I always felt steamrolled <laughs> by these people and it felt like whenever I tried to stand up for myself either they didn't take me seriously or I felt worse or my idea or my belief or whatever I want it was belittled and I uh, started to develop this this um, you know the belief of well no matter what I do or what I say, it's not going to matter anyway. So I'm not going to bother saying anything. So I started playing really small in my life. But then I, I, I became really frustrated with that because it seemed like, you know, people were coming into my presence. I was like, I'm a nice person. Like, I don't deserve this. Like, I would do anything and everything for anyone. So, like, why do I keep getting these people into my life? And... Um, at that time, I had heard the term life coach. I was intrigued by this term, was not fully aware of what a life coach was at that point in time in my life. But I asked a life coach a question. And the question was, how do I motivate someone else to change? Because at that point in time in my life, um, you know, I believed that I was the nice person and then all these people were just being mean. And anyway, the, the response I got was that you, me, meaning me, <laughs> that I needed to be the change that I want to see in those people. And that's really where the coaching came from. I mean, I was a client first. And then once I started diving into the personal development, self-awareness, it just kept coming and coming and coming. And, you know, since the title of your show is Take Char uh, the, Des the Angels and Destiny Show, right? Yeah. Um, one of the first books that had a really, really big impact on me, it's called Assertiveness for Earth Angels. Yes. Are you familiar with that one? Yeah. By Doreen Virtue. Um, I didn't think to pull it out of my bookcase <laughs> to show it on this show until just now. Um, but yeah, it's in my bookcase. I use it as a reference all the time. Um, and it really, really made sense to me because I wanted to learn how to stand up for myself and still be nice, right? Still be yeah. authentically me because I didn't want to be, you know, like a cutthroat person or I didn't want to be, you know, super dominant, like domineering over anyone else. I still wanted to be authentically me. That is sort of, yeah. We, yeah, so, so so that's kind of like how you got into it. So, so how do you, um, uh, you know, find helping others, um, you know, find, find their, find their voice to, to, to be, to, you know, to, to speak their truth, to be confident in how, in how they, in how they are? Yeah, so, um, well, there's a program that I've created that I take all of my clients through. And I mean, I really take them through, you know, learning about self worth, and then taking them through exercises for assertiveness and assertiveness encompasses, you know, your boundaries learn like understanding what your boundaries are, because people will likely cross your boundaries. And it makes you, um, you know, it bothers you. But you know, you probably haven't communicated it. Nobody knows there's a boundary if you don't communicate it. You know, that's like, you know, if you go to like a sports game, I just think like the Wimbledon, you know, yeah. there's like VIP section, but if there's nobody, um, you know, taking tickets for the VIP section, or if there's no like barriers around the VIP section, how are you going to know that it's the VIP, right? So you're just going to walk yeah. on in there. You don't know you need a special ticket unless somebody tells you, yes. <laughs> right? Um, so it's taking it's taking people through um, through exercises, giving them homework, and we practice the assertiveness skills. So generally, when people come, 
you know, there's, there's certain people in their lives that they need help to feel confident around. So learning to communicate is the most number one, like effective skill, because our the quality of our relationships determines the quality of our lives. Yeah, so makes, makes absolute sense. Yeah, like I will, I will do calm, it's called calm the chaos workshops. And the very first question I ask in my workshop is, what causes chaos in your life? And, you know, I write down all the things that people say that causes chaos in their life. So an example is work. You know, people often yeah. say, well, work causes chaos in my life. And I'm like, okay, that's fair. But tell me, how does work cause chaos in your life? I say you go to work, you're given a paycheck, and it provides you money to support the lifestyle uh, so that you can go out and enjoy activities with your family and that you can eat and that you can have a wonderful place to live. So how does work cause chaos? I don't get it. You know, I just play yeah. around with them a little. And when it comes down to it, it's the people. It's the relationship. It's how two people communicate and how they get along together. That's what's causing the chaos in our lives. Yeah, that, make, that makes really good sense. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we've um, had Annette on from uh, Chatham, Ontario, Canada. So, so thanks for, <laughs> for, for joining. And if you've got any questions, you know, we've, we've not got much longer left on the show, but if you do have any questions, then, you know, please do or, um, type them in and we'll, we'll see if we can uh, answer them uh, live i hear or not and it's funny when you when you're talking doing that analogy uh, that kind of like puts things in perspective um for a couple of years ago because bon jovi were over here uh and me and my friend had paid for um, not gold no sorry we hadn't paid for platinum we paid for gold tickets um, but we'd also paid extra for the um uh, the complimentary bar and but we noticed that there were people who in front of us and when you hear them talking they hadn't paid the they they'd paid really cheap tickets paid really cheap tickets and they'd got in because they'd paid for the bar and it's like so so at the time we were kind of like oh my god these, these people but now it kind of like puts in this perspective where it's like actually if they had somebody there these people wouldn't have got in front of us and uh, that so so yeah, it is. If you don't tell people your boundaries, then they're, they're just this human nature. You're just going to continue on no matter what with, without really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And um, and then another piece of the boundaries is holding others accountable, right? Mm. Um, so an example is um, within this last year, we there's... Um, there's a, a house next door to us, but there's two apartments. It's a house, but it's into two. So there was people on the bottom that had a dog and the dog didn't have a big area to do its business. So the owners put the dog on a really long lead and then the dog would come over to our house and do its business, but they never ever cleaned it up, like ever. Oh. Um, That's good. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I approached the owner and I just said, you know, could we have this taken care of? And um, the owners of the dog, they didn't really want to do anything about it. So then the, the owners of the house had to get a formal letter to give to the dog owners to say, if this is not done by next week, then you'll have to move out. So people don't like to be held accountable. So what happened with those neighbors with the dog? Because somebody held them accountable to take responsibility for their dog, they moved out. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty extreme. Right? It, yeah, that is a little extreme. However, in this point in time, in our world, you know, it's uncomfortable to hold people accountable, right? It's okay. You know, it's easy to communicate your boundary and set your boundary but it's not so easy to hold others accountable. It's not so easy to say, hey, I already told you about this. Please don't do it again, you know? Yeah. And you have, to, you have to do it a couple of times. 
It's like kids, if you're a parent out there, if you're watching and if you're a parent, if you set a boundary with kid, what are they going to do? They're going to push the boundaries. They're going to go, oh, really? They're going to whine. They're going to push the boundaries because why? They want to see if you're really, really serious. Yeah. And what are what are we adults? We're just big kids. <laughs> we, yeah, do the exactly. same. <laughs> we do the same. So, you know, I just really want to hone in on that. If you have a boundary that you need to tighten the reins in on, it is all on you. It's to, it's all on you to communicate it. It's all on you to hold that person, whoever's crossing your boundary, accountable. And it's all on you to follow through on the outcome if they don't respect your boundary. Because all of that, it is tough. But in the end, that will increase your self-worth, your self-esteem, and your confidence. Oh, well, that's that's brilliantly poor. That that really is. Um, yeah, I really, really do, really do like that. Um, now, as most people that watch the show know, um, I do um, guided. Uh, um, I always do uh, offer guided mini meditations or an angel card. So, Kelly, would you like me to pull an angel card for you and those watching, or do a mini guided meditation? I'm feeling the angel card. Everyone always feels angel cards. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but I don't mind. Because <laughs> I, like, I, like, I, like, I like playing with angel cards. Um, anyway, so um, what, what I do when I do angel cards, um, I don't actually do the cards to predict the future. Um, because I work very much in the present, which seems contradictory, bearing in mind I do past life regression and I work with the past, but that's to heal the past so it doesn't affect your present. And I work with the future, but if you know your future, then it does affect you in the present. So everything I do is in the present. So the cards are what you need to know for your highest good um, at this moment in time. So as usual, just clay, uh, cleanse and uh, bless them. So... What does Kelly and all those watching live or at a later date need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Kelly and all those watching live or live or at a later date need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? Kelly. Okay, which I think ties in quite nicely with what we've been talking about. Distant thunder, clear the air. Okay. With, which uh, which kind of like tie, ties in nicely with what we were talking, talking about with, you know, setting your boundaries, holding people accountability. And again, clear, you know, clear, clear, clearing the air. And it also is quite timing with all the new moon energy and all the things going on at the moment. Um, so what I'm actually picking up um, from this card uh, for you and those watching is whatever issues are going on around you, it's time to actually release them, to actually clear the air and let them go because they're no longer needed in your life at this moment. It's like when we have a thunderstorm on a really hot day and the air, it feels so much fresher afterwards. Mm -hmm. you, you really need to, to clear the air now and let go of those people and those issues that are actually keeping you feeling stuck at the moment, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I like the entire body goosebumps. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I really resonate with that card. Thank you. Oh, you're well. You're welcome. You know, the, the, the angels always know that, um, what you know what cards uh, they they need need to bring need to bring out. It's never us that pull the cards. It's the angels that decide on on it. So, Kelly, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave those that are watching this show? If there's one thing that you can remember from today's show, is I want to remind you that you are responsible for the way people treat you. There's so many benefits to embracing who you are, embracing your sensitivity, and learning to communicate with those around you because the world needs more heart. You are heart-centered. There's my heart. <laughs> hey. And the world needs more empathy. It needs more love. It needs more kindness. It needs more 
you. So if you are feeling like the society has shrunk you, it's your time to open that back up and learn the skills that you need so that you can thrive. Brilliant, they're, they're absolutely brilliant words. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I hope you've really enjoyed this and you've found the words that Kelly said insightful and helpful. So Kelly, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Because I know you do have a show. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, I do have my own show as well. I have the Coffee and Confidence show. Show your t-shirt. I will, I will. <laughs> okay, I'll stand up. <laughs> a friend of mine bought me this t-shirt. It's uh, the Coffee and Confidence. Let me move my hair. So it's the Coffee and Confidence shirt. Um, <laughs> I want to welcome you to join my Coffee and Confidence group. So it's a private group where we share the love of coffee or tea or water or whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I <laughs> like coffee. And it's a group of like-minded people, people where we have a little fun and we grow in confidence. I mean, inside the group, I do some special trainings that you won't find anywhere else. Um, you know, I do live uh, Q and A's and we really help and support each other. So I would invite you to join that group. And if it's okay to leave the link once we're done the show, I can do that. Yep, yep, please do, um, you know, and you know, any website details, you know, I can add those um, on, on, on to the end as well. And people, you should watch watch the show. I mean, I've watched it and I've been on it. I've been a guest on the show as well. And it is a really good show, fun show to, to, to actually do. So yeah, Kelly, please feel free to leave any links you want to, um, that, you know, that, that's absolutely fine. If I think there's any you haven't, then I'll add a couple more. <laughs> and that on there for you. <laughs> Great. So again, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call where we can talk about um, yourself, I can educate you on what I do, and we can talk about and see whether I can help you take charge of your destiny. And also, if future life progression interests you, then I'll be teaching the three-day certified future life progression course on the 15th, 16th, and 17th of November at the Clarendon Hotel in Blackheath, um, where you can actually become a future life uh, practitioner so please feel free to contact me for more details. And by the way, I will see you next Wednesday, the 7th of August, 8 p.m., where my guest will be Virginia Rounds Griffiths. We'll be sharing her wonderful insights and wisdom about standing in your power from a clear energy fountain. So that should be an interesting show. So again, Kelly, thank you so much for being on my show. It's a pleasure having you. Um, show me couldn't be, couldn't be longer, but I know you've got a, um, you've got another um, show to show to be doing um and some guidance so again thank you so much and thank you to everyone who's watched this live or at a later date and i will see you all next week <laughs> bye bye <laughs> we like hearts <laughs>